Okay, what does it say? Let's read it. Ready? Go. God okay, what is comfort? What? Raise your hand if you know what comfort means. So I could be up there. Yes. God's comfort. Yes, Jace. Being comfortable. Okay. Okay. When we say God's comfort, what do you think it's about? Of course, I will talk about it, but just in case, I just want to know how much you know about what comfort is. Yes, Brandon. <laughs> okay, Joshua. What God likes. Hmm. Ah, so you guys are thinking God's something, so you're okay. Um, okay, we will talk about it, then you'll find out what it really means, okay? No problem. And we are going to look at the Bible passage from 1 Kings chapters 18 to 19, okay? Does anybody know what kind of story appears in 1 Kings? Or who appears in 1 Kings? Very famous prophet, Caleb. David might, yes, okay? <laughs> yes? Solomon does appear. Yes, David, Solomon, all these people, starting from 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. Yes, Caleb? Aha! Okay. So, 1 Kings is about kings, as it says, kings. Yes? And uh, who was the first king of Israel? Yes, Selina. Saul, that's right, in Koreans, how we right? And the second king was what Caleb said, David. The third king was what he's, uh, yes, Solomon. Very good. And then what happened after that? Ah, these many kings, oh my. So Israelites were saying, oh God, you're our God. Okay, you're our king, but we want person, you know, human king. That's when Saul began to be king, and then David and Solomon, you know these stories. But after Solomon died, his son began to be a king, but there was a fight, conflict, and just like Korea, Israel was divided into two, to Israel and Judah. And the, this line is for Israel, that line is for Judah. So you can see the kings. And the one that we're going to talk about today, in the chapters that we have today, is this guy. And his name is Ahab. Did you hear him? I think you guys heard this story a lot in your Sunday school. And there's this King Ahab. Do you think this king, oh, you know what? Uh, who was King Ahab's dad? Omri. He's dead. Zimri. Okay, all these dads. Okay, now do you think Omri was a good king that followed God? Mm -mm. Then what about Ahab? Uh -uh. He was not following God's will. The biggest problem was he married to Jezebel. Who's her? And this couple, they were worshiping what? Not God, but Baal and Asherah. These are the names of gods that are not our true living God. Yeah? These are called usang, right, in Korean, idols. And that's what they were worshiping. It wasn't just worshiping. They were making all these big temples for these gods. They were making many, many prophets for uh, these gods. And they were feeding them, you know, they were treating them very well so they can worship these wrong gods. And uh, Selena, you don't have to explain. Hannah understands. Okay, so then, and that, not only that, Jezebel went all the way to kill all the prophets of God. She was very bad, yes. And she was like, we should only worship Baal and Asherah. Only for our own good, not for whatever God you guys are talking about, Israelites. We don't need that God. Okay, all the prophets that worship that God, kill them. So they were all gone. And there was prophet Elijah. All of a sudden in the Bible, in that passage, appears Elijah. It doesn't talk about where he's from, whose parents he's from, or whatever, where he grew up, or it doesn't really say any of that. All of a sudden in the Bible, chapter 17 of 1 Kings, there was Elijah, the prophet of God. And then God said to Elijah, what? Go to King Ahab and say, there will be no rain in your nation for many, many years. And then there really were no rain. 
and it was hard. And then there's actually a little more story about what happened after that, but we will skip to three years later. God said to Elijah again, and he said, go now, back to King Ahab and present yourself to him, and I'll send rain now on that land. And do you think it's safe to go to King Ahab when Elijah is God's prophet and everyone else was killed? No, not at all. Jezebel really wants to get Elijah. Even King Ahab was calling everybody to say, go get Elijah. He's the prophet of God. He should be killed. And he was safe because God protected him in his own way. So now God's saying to Elijah, go and show yourself to Ahab. And there was somebody called Obadiah. And this guy was palace administrator for King Ahab. He was actually working for King Ahab. But what we find in the Bible is that he was a devout believer, meaning he really loved God. So then he secretly hid a hundred prophets of God, our God, not Baal and Asherah. And he hid them in two caves and he supplied them with food and water. So that means he was like a not spy, but he was doing something other than what he was working for. He was working for King Ahab, but he was actually really for God, right? So when Elijah came to Obadiah and said, you know what, God said to me to go to King Ahab and talk to him. And Obadiah was like, no, no, don't tell me that. That's very scary. Oh, King Ahab would kill me. Didn't you know that King Ahab was looking for you? If you say that you will appear and you don't appear, I'm dead. And they will find out I'm you, worshiping our God, not your God. I mean, not Baal and Asherah. And Ahab said, don't worry. I ah, not Ahab. Elijah said, don't worry. I will be there. I will be there. I'll meet King Ahab. Okay, so what happens? A, uh, Elijah goes to King Ahab. And then he says to call all the people of Israel to meet Elijah on Mount Carmel, right? And bring, he said, bring 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah. That's what they had, right? That many prophets. And there's only Elijah for God. And he said, well, let's build altar and let's see whose God answers our prayer and give the fire on the altar. And King Ahab and the prophet said, okay, fine, let's do it. Let's start this battle. And what happens? You guys know this story, don't you? Yeah. And then the prophets of Baal and Asherah, they built the altar, they put the bull, and they were like praying to their God, and they were dancing to their God. And do you think anything happened? They were saying, answer us, answer us, nothing. And Elijah was like almost teasing. Well, he was teasing, he should tease. He was like, oh, maybe your God is sleeping. Maybe your God is just, you know, playing somewhere else. Maybe your God is too tired or too, too you know, uh, busy. And he was just saying all these things. So they were like, no, our God is real God. Oh. And then they were doing all these weird things that they do to worship their weird false God. And still nothing happened. It was very quiet. No answer, whatever. So then, what does... Elijah too. Now it's my time. Okay, look, I will put the altar. And he built 12 stones to remember uh, 12 um, Israelite uh, groups. And then he put the bull. And what did he do? He even made a trench around that altar. And then he poured water. How many times? Three times. Of how much water? Four large jars with were filled with water. And then he let them pour, pour, do it again. He did it three times. That means there's water all over, right? All over the bull, all over the stones, all over the wood, all over the you know floor, I mean the, the ground. Everything's wet. Do you think there would be fire and there would, I mean the fire, if and only if fire came, it should be very strong to really burn everything, right? So Elijah, did all of, the, all of that. And what did he say? Let's all say this. Ready, go. Answer me, Lord, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. So Elijah was praying to God. These people, Israelites, 
they are still not sure who to believe. They were like, this way, that way. Oh, our God is that God, but oh, let's also worship Baal and Asherah because it seems like I get more money uh, when I worship that. Uh, or I get safety when I worship Baal and Asherah. So then uh, these Israelites were very foolish and he really wanted these people of God to come back to God. So he was praying, Lord, please answer me, answer us. And then what happens? Of course, in the fire of the Lord. Of course, this is only a picture. So I'm sure in that real time, it must be much more strong. And um, the Lord, the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. So everything was just burned up. That's how strong it came. And what do you think people said? Let's say this, ready, go. The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. That's what all the people were saying. They were lying prostrate. <gasps> oh, that is real God. That is real God. We should worship that God. Okay, so far, very, very happy story. Victory everywhere, right? Yeah. And what happens? Prophets of Baal and Asherah were captured. And uh, Elijah said, don't let anyone get away. And they actually were all punished and killed because they were the false prophets, right? And a cloud started to form. That was a lot of uh, hand signs. And even uh, when this was happening, Elijah was not like cheering, but he was like praying hard to God. Please, Lord, now is the time. You said there will be rain. And he was praying, praying very hard. And then he let King Ahab go away and because it's going to rain. You know, there will be a hard pouring rain. It's time. And then really heavy rain was falling. So if we stop the story here, it feels like, oh, Elijah lived happily ever after. All the Israelites were happy. So happy ending, end of the story. Is that it, do you think? No, that's not it. And a lot of you already know what happens after that. Ahab, King Ahab told Jezebel everything. He was like, oh, you know what, you know what happened? <laughs> that king, uh, the, the prophet, prophet Elijah, he killed all of your prophets. And the God, I'm sure, I think King Ahab might have shared a little bit about what God did, the fire and everything. But I think he was more <gasps> frantic about what happened to all the prophets that Jezebel was, you know, feeding and Jezebel was, uh, you know, uh, uh, raising or how should I say. Um, and Jezebel was so angry. The picture seems like he's, she's not that angry, but she was very angry, it says. She was very angry. Jenny, Jezebel was very angry. Why? Because God and Prophet Elijah was killing her prophets. She was thinking, I have Baal and Asherah, and I have all these prophets. I have the power. And now God appears, Elijah appears, and she's almost nothing. And she's like, I'll do the same to you as you've done to my prophets. What does that mean? She's going to kill. She's going to kill Elijah. And that's what she wanted from before. Now she wants it even more. So what do you think Elijah did? Do you think Elijah came and fought with Jezebel? Not really. He was very, very afraid. Because this was real time, real thing, right? If somebody very powerful in that time, maybe like president or, or you know, some very strong person, personal power said that I will use anything to kill you, then do you think you'll be like, oh, I'm okay because I'm with God? I think that's very hard. That's, that's almost impossible. And Elijah was very, very scared and he ran for his life. And he went into the wilderness and sat down under a broom bush, which is actually our school name. What is it? Juniper. Juniper. Yes, Juniper. That's where our school name came from. Juniper tree. They call it broom bush, juniper tree, dodem namu in Korean. And he prayed there. And what did he pray for? He didn't say, oh, could you please help me? He was praying, please, let me die. I had enough, Lord. I, I worked so hard. But just, I, I think this is, this is it. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. And he was lying there. He was just, just had no more strength. And what does God do? Of course, he won't leave him there by himself. He actually sent an angel. An angel touched Elijah and said, get up and eat. 
And there were not just any bread, but in the Bible it says there were some bread baked over hot coals. Meaning, think about bread that just came out of oven. You, you tasted any bread like that? It should be very hot and yummy, right? That was the bread that was provided for Elijah when he was thinking, I will die. Lord, just kill me. But there was that. And not only just a little bit of water, but there was a jar of water. God was just ready to feed him and ready to let him rest there. And after eating all of that, he was sleeping more. He was just resting more. He had no more strength. And then second time, the angel of the Lord came and touched him and said, get up and eat, for your journey is too much for you, understanding what Elijah is going through. And he was strengthened by that food. And he traveled 40 days and 40 nights to go to the mountain of God, which was called Horeb. He went there. And in there, he went to summer uh, like wilderness, kind of like when Jesus went to the wilderness. Elijah went there. And God was asking him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And this is what Elijah said. Can somebody say this, like read this for us? Maybe a boy. A low voice. Okay, Jace, let's have Jace say it. <laughs> Can you say all of these like Elijah? Ready, go. Oh, no, 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 no. That's God. This is Elijah. <laughs> I have. So what is Elijah saying? He's saying, I really worked hard, Lord, right, for you. But what's happening to the Israelites? They still don't worship you. They don't care about you. And they torn down your altars. They don't want to worship you. And your prophets are all dead. And I'm the only one left. What am I supposed to do? I am the only one. Now I'm going to be killed too. That's what Elijah was saying. He was still scared and he was still not sure what's going to happen. Because he really, when he sees the reality, this is the reality, right? All the hard work, but no Israelite following God. And God said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. So Elijah went out and he waited for God. And there was powerful wind to start with. And he felt like, oh, maybe God is talking to me through the powerful wind. And like rocks were falling and it was scary. And there was no God. He couldn't hear any voice from God. And there was the earthquake. And, you know, all the rocks were falling and he was very scared. Is God there? He's the strong and powerful God. But he didn't hear any voice from there. And then there was a fire, kind of like that altar, right? There was that strong fire. And there was like big fire. And he was thinking, maybe God wants to show himself because I'm so scared and God wants to show his power. And there was no voice. And then lastly, there was a gentle whisper. Kind of thing. And you guys know what whisper is, right? You guys like to whisper to each other. When you want to say something in secret or when you want to say something that is very important. right? And God said in a gentle whisper. Again, he said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And just like Jace read, he said the exact same thing. Lord, I really worked hard, but look, no Israelites worshiping you. Everyone's gone. I'm the only one, and I think I'll be killed. What does God say? He said this. He said, go back the way you came and anoint this person, that person, that person as kings, and they will work for me. And now go anoint Elisha, not Elijah, but Elisha, another prophet, to take over your job. And I saved 7,000 people who never worshiped Baal, and they are my worshipers. And they didn't bow down to Baal. And God was comforting Elijah. How is he comforting Elijah? Was he saying, why, why are you not trusting me? Why can't you work for me anymore? Is that what God was saying? Was God angry that Elijah was scared? Was God saying, oh, you don't trust me? Well, we'll die then. Is that what God is saying? Never. He was just questioning him. Well, what are you doing here, Elijah? Don't you know me? 
Who am I? Who, what kind of God am I? And he was saying, I prepared everything for you. You're not the only one. And now your job is done well. And he's, he didn't say exactly these words, but I can totally hear that from God. He's saying, trust me. I understand what you're going through. And you've done well. Rest and give your burden to me. And I'll provide everything you need. And you're not alone. I am gentle and kind and I love you. I think that's what God was saying, even though that's not what's written in the Bible. But I think through those words, God is saying all of these, or even more, about how much God cares for Elijah. How much God is the one that is working. It is not Elijah working. He was working, of course. But God knows what he's doing, right? And he was comforting Elijah. You can trust me. It's okay. Then what about us today? That's what I meant by God's comfort. God was comforting Elijah. But he's not only comforting Elijah, but he's comforting us. And this is actually a Bible verse from Joshua 1.9. And that's what second graders were trying to memorize this week. But I don't think anybody memorized it yet. I think a lot of you might have sang this song or memorized it and know about it. In Korean, it says, 강하고 담대하라. Yeah? And I know Lucy's name is Joshua, yeah, Joshua, yeah. So this must be the Bible verse that your parents were reading and praying for, right? So let's read this together. Ready, go. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And even though this was from the Bible of Joshua, Elijah, you know, a lot of stories in the Bible, they are very similar because that is how God is working in our lives. So even though we're not that powerful Elijah who was like going to build the altar and let God's power come with the fire, we're not like that. But that doesn't say that we are very weak and we are not God's people. Yeah, Jenny, two Jennies over there. Yes. God is calling us and he's saying to us, and he's comforting us. And he's saying the same thing that he said to Elijah. Trust me, whatever hardship you're having, whenever you feel like you're the only person of whatever you're going through. Maybe you're thinking, I'm the only boy in my class. I'm the only girl who has no friend. I'm the only student who doesn't speak English. I'm the only one who nobody wants to play with. Or I'm the only one who has no brother or sister. Or I'm the only one who has no puppy at house or I'm the only one, whatever, whatever. There could be many things that you feel, that you feel like I'm alone, I don't think anybody's with me, or I, I'm doing my best, but nothing's working. And God says, I understand what you're going through, and you've done well so far. And if you, when you rest, I'll give you all that you need, and your burden can be, come to me. I will bury that burden, okay? Um, and he says, I will provide everything you need, you're not alone. I am gentle and kind, and I love you. And it's different from Elijah because God already kept his promise to give us Jesus Christ, who is with us all the time. Holy Spirit is with us all the time. It's not like we need prophet anymore. We don't need Elijah to come and tell, tell us, where's your God? We already have the perfect prophet or priest or our friend, our Savior, Jesus Christ, right? So we can definitely know that God is comforting us right now. Whatever you're going through, God loves us. And God is telling us, I comfort you. I want to comfort you. Okay? And he's not saying it only for us, but he wants us to do the same to others. Right? Because he is the God of comfort. He wants to say, I am here and I love you. And he wants you to do the same. Of course, God does that to us, but he wants us to do that to others. Okay? When you see somebody going through a hard time, don't just think about yourself. Don't just think, I'm the only one going through a hard time. That friend did this to me. That friend did this to me. I'm not going to forgive. No, you have to think about those people first. That's what God wants us to do. And that is always not easy. Even as I'm getting older and older, it's never easy. But that's what God is telling us today. Okay? So, let us 